Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo Wii, everybody's favorite Nintendo console from 2006. And we're going to be screwing around with it today because we're going to attempt to install Linux on this console. That's right. Now I figured this was pretty appropriate because it was a year ago this month when I did the PlayStation 2 Linux video using Sony's official PS2 Linux kit. This method we're going to take a look at on the Wii here is certainly not official at all. This was not a Nintendo sanctioned thing and it's only thanks to the work of some people in the Wii homebrewing community that we're even able to do this in the first place. So yes, if it wasn't already obvious, you have to have a homebrewed Wii with BootMe installed and then you're also going to need an SD card and a USB flash drive, the two things to make any homebrew project successful, at least in theory anyways. But yeah, let's go ahead and swap over to my computer and we'll get started with this. All right, so getting Linux installed on the Nintendo Wii is actually relatively simple, and I'm going to kind of walk you through that process here. There are a couple of distros that you could use, believe it or not. We've got white or wheat, perhaps, if you're pronouncing it like the eyes and Wii, but whatever, white, blight, and X white. Now, the difference between these is uh, what they're based on. So white Linux is based on Debian. Uh, and Blight Linux, which is down here under third-party distros, is based on Gen 2. We're going to be using X-White for this video because it is white Linux with a GUI. It's got X included as well. So we're just going to use that for this video. But theoretically, you could use any of these three with the installer, which is the far easier method of installing Linux on the Wii. You could go through the method of manually installing one of these other distros if you would prefer to do that or just with white Linux or Blight Linux or whichever one that you want. But it, it's definitely quite the uh, ordeal that you have to go through here. And they made this installer to just make the process a lot easier. So we're going to be taking advantage of that. Now, it should be noted that all of this info is is really old, over 10 years old. OK, you saw like from the date here on which was at this page here, uh, this version was released in 2008, 2009. So this stuff is like pretty old. But I did come across this post over on GBA temp that was posted in 2020. That is a guide on how to get X white Linux running on the Wii and get Wi-Fi working, which is pretty great. We're going to try that out uh, later on in this video as well. Now, you need to have a homebrewed Wii with boot me installed. If you don't have a homebrewed Wii, I'd recommend going over to Wii.guide and following along with the tutorial here. Once you get the homebrew channel and boot me installed, then you can come back to this page and you have to download a couple things from this Mediafire link. There's two .7z files in here and one of these has to go on your SD card. One of them has to go on your USB flash drive. So we're going to start with the SD card, which should look something like this. We're going to grab the SD card or the apps.7z file right here. And all you gotta do is go into your apps folder on your SD card, go into the apps folder in here and extract this folder into the apps folder on the SD card. And that's all there is to it. This is the installer that we will run from the homebrew channel. Now going over to the USB drive, which I have nothing on, we're going to open up the white full Linux.7z file and just extract everything to the root of the USB drive. And there we go. So what we have to do now is take the USB drive and SD card out of our computer, put them back into the Wii, and we have to open up the homebrew channel, go through the installer, and then once we're done with that, we have to take the SD card out of the Wii, put it back into the computer, download this ELF file. It is a PAL file, but the guide says it doesn't matter apparently. And then we have to replace the ppcboot.elf inside of the bootme folder on the SD card with that file and then rename it ppcboot.elf. And that will allow us to, from the homebrew channel, hit the home button, select launch bootme, and it will then boot into Linux. So let's go ahead and try this all out and see if it works. All right, so we've got the Wii hooked up and everything set up, the SD card, USB drive plugged in. It's important to note that the USB drive has to be plugged into port zero, which is the bottom USB port or the right one if you've got the console standing up. So we're going to go into the homebrew channel here. And we should have our single installer right here. We're just going to run that and click load. Now at this point, you have to plug in a USB keyboard to the other USB port. So let me grab that. And so it says right here, it will erase the contents of the SD card inserted. So make sure you don't have anything that you don't want to lose on it. 
So we're going to say yes. And it says, please don't remove the SD card nor any USB storage devices. The installer will use the following source media. And we can pretty much go with the default options here. It defaults to 256 for the recommended size of the fat partition. That's fine with us. We're just going to do that. And now we get another warning box that says, if you continue, all the existing data in the SD card will be erased. So we say yes. And now it's untarring, so everything looks good so far. It is mentioned in the tutorial that this will take a while, so just be prepared. And the screen just went black, but the console's still on. Should I hit a key on the keyboard? Sure, let's do that. Oh, okay, I just went to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, so far on the timer, or the stopwatch rather, we are about eight minutes in and we're halfway done. So that's not, I mean, 16 minutes, if it actually ends up being like 16, 20 minutes, that's not too bad. <laughs> And there we go, we're done. It didn't even take 15 minutes, uh, so that's pretty great. So we're going to hit OK to reboot the video console, all right? And it said that it was copying over a ppcboot.l file, so I'm wondering if we even need to copy over the version that was mentioned in that guide. We're going to see, because it said you can launch it right now from the Homebrew channel, so let's just try it and see. So the SD card has had the installer wiped, so nothing's gonna show up here, but we're gonna press the home button and go down to launch boot me, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's booting. And it just ejected the disk, which is interesting. But yeah, here it is, it's starting the desktop manager, so I wonder why the guide said that you needed to copy over that other L file. And by the way, this is all done off the SD card. You don't need to have the USB drive plugged into the Wii anymore. So I've plugged a mouse into the other USB port. And yeah, let's view the about information. So we'll go about XFCE. And this is a uh, version four copyright 02 to 06. And yeah, XFCE 4 version 4.3.99.2. But yeah, I mean, here it is. We've got the dock down here. We've got our icons on the desktop. We've got our multiple desktops up here. We have this, which I don't actually know what. Oh, that's uh, restoring hidden windows. Okay. Our hide windows and show desktop. All right. And yeah, so let's try to go. This right here is the menu which we can get to just by right clicking on the desktop as well. So this is the web browser it looks like, although it says it failed to execute default web browser input output error. We're gonna try in a minute here to get Wi-Fi working and I'm wondering if the other PPC boot.l file has something to do with that. I'm not sure, but I mean, clearly we're here booted into Linux with XFCE running just fine without that other L file. So the default one seems to work fine for, for that purpose. But yeah, so we've got terminal here. Um, let's view our apps, let's see what we got. So editors, we've got mouse pad and nano, got a few net tools there. Oh, we've got opera too. Okay, well that's super nice. Can we launch opera? Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it does not appear to be launching, which sucks. But we also have, let's see, we got programming, we got Python, Bash and SH, uh, sound, we've got some sound stuff. But yeah, you've got a, a few things in here. Uh, various tools, you've got VLC, which is pretty nice. Can we launch that? You know, I wonder, could you put a DVD in and like play, like does it, does it recognize the disc drive? I'm sure there's a better solution for playing DVDs back on the Wii with like some other homebrew app, but I'm wondering if like, if it even recognizes the disc drive here. All right, so quick jump cut here because I wanted to just talk a little bit more about this ppcboot.l file that I was mentioning earlier because as it turns out, there is a very good reason why we have to change out the file with the one that the text tutorial guide mentioned and that's because the installer we used installs version 2.6.27 of the Linux kernel. But the latest version of the 
Linux kernel that was compiled for the Wii, at least through this project, was 2.6.32. And that's the version that is contained in the ELF file that the text guide points to. It's known as the Mini Kernel Preview 5, and it contains some enhancements over previous versions. Notably, it has experimental support for the Wii's DVD drive and updated support for the Wii's Wi-Fi adapter. So I went ahead and copied over that file to the SD card and replaced the existing one. And even though the text guide claims it doesn't matter if you use a PAL or NTSC version of this file, I just got the NTSC version because it was there and we're on an NTSC console, so it just seemed like the right thing to do. But anyways, with all of that said, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the homebrew channel again and we will uh, launch boot me from here and get back into the Linux environment. And then we'll go through the process of trying to uh, get Wi-Fi working. And we'll see if the web browser decides to launch this time because it wasn't launching before for whatever reason, both Opera and whatever default uh, browser that it had. And yeah, every time it starts up, it tries to eject whatever disk is in the drive. Of course, there's nothing in there now, so it's not going to do anything. But yeah, here we are. So we're going to immediately, I've got the text guide pulled up because it does go through a series of terminal commands you have to run to uh, get the Wi-Fi adapter working. So we're gonna try that out and see if that is doable. But first, let's just try to launch the browser again and you know see what happens. So what browser is this? It's just called a web browser. Um, I'm gonna guess, well, this is XFCE though. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it says input output error and we go to <laughs> we go to apps here and go to net and we go to opera. I wonder what Ice Weasel is. Is this a web browser? Yeah, Ice Weasel web browser. So that is that is another web browser. Oh, there we go. It's starting up. Look at that. This looks like it's Firefox based. Yeah, this is definitely Firefox based. It's Mozilla 5.0 right here. And yeah, let's uh, let's just minimize this for now. The guide tells us to completely log out of the account we're logged into now, and then just log into the root account. I wonder what account we're logged into though, because we didn't make an account or anything. I guess there's some other... Oh, I don't want to shut down the Wii. Okay, shutdown canceled, you can log in. All right, so, so we gotta log in as root and the password is white, W-H-I-I-T-E. And there we go. So now if we type in, um, I was gonna say start X, but I don't believe it is start X. Oh, it is, look at that. The tutorial says to type in start XFCE4, but start X works too. And yeah, so now we're logged into the root account and we've got this tips and tricks thing that came up. It doesn't look like there are any tips or tricks in here. But anyways, let's go to terminal here and let's begin by typing, what is our first command? We have to change directory to the uh, home slash we and we got to run dpkg dash i star dot deb. All right, so that's finished. We got to change directory back to the root. Now we got to run a tar command. Thank God for being able to press tab to autocomplete. And now we have to run nano to edit a configuration file, etc network interfaces. And this shows you how rudimentary that this is because we have to type in the SSID and password into here then we got to get out of that we want to say yes save right to that and there we go so yeah there's no like uh you know network search program or interface of any kind in this like is there anything in settings for network like there's the settings manager okay you got keyboard mouse file manager display okay well we can change the display settings at least uh there's only one uh resolution that we can pick from 320 by 240 but yeah there's nothing in here about you know network uh <laughs> so Let's just see if we are on the network. Let's try to open up that browser that actually opened up, which is here under uh, Net Ice Weasel. And let's hope that we're, well, actually, I guess we could just go to terminal here and try to run a ping. Unknown host, that is not a good sign. You know, I wonder, do, I wonder if we got to restart. That would, that would actually make sense. Failed to bring up WLAN zero. Oh gosh. Okay, so the Wii account is the default account that it makes. Okay, ping google.com. Unknown host. All right, so we're force powering off the Wii again because I have just 
temporarily changed my Wi-Fi network to use WPA and WPA2 instead of just solely WPA2. Keyword is temporarily. So we're going to try this again once the network comes back online. And we will see if it's just the security protocol that's causing the issue. But again, the Wii can connect to it just fine without it being set to WPA and WPA2, but I'm guessing maybe Wii Linux is, is, is not that way. I was thinking of trying to use the Wii's Ethernet adapter because I have one of those because I've tried to do network stuff on the Wii before. You guys may remember back in 2021, we tried to use some third-party web browsers on this thing and that failed in utter disaster. But uh, as a result of that, I, I have a <laughs> the Wii's USB wired network Ethernet module. I don't know why I just made that too long. Yeah, uh, I have that, but it doesn't specifically mention that that is supported on the wiki page about this, at least from what I've read, but we can try it anyway, because I've got a network switch right here that we could hook this up to. And honestly, I much prefer ethernet for everything because it's just so much more convenient. Uh, of course, when you have access, easy access to an ethernet jack. Okay, it failed to bring up ET, failed to bring up WLAN zero, done. Oh my God, really? Really? Maybe I entered the password wrong or something? Oh, I think I see the problem. This is supposed to be WLAN 1, apparently? And it's supposed to say, I face WLAN 1 instead of WLAN 0. So maybe it's not even a WPA2 issue, but okay, so we're going to get out of that. Yes, we want to save. Yes, we want to write to that file. Okay, okay, that's looking good. Authenticating. So now I should be able to, terminals come up here. Let's ping google.com. Oh, there we go. Oh, six yes let's go we're online people oh my gosh that is beautiful all right so let's go back into apps here let's go to net launch that ice weasel web browser uh we're gonna start a new session yes i know the last session closed un unexpectedly that may have been because we forced powered off the system and let's try to go to google.com not .cm, not google.cm. Well, that also works, but google.com. Of course, you know, this is a super freaking old web browser, so it's not gonna be able to display modern pages properly. So, you know, Google's displayed in its like 2006 mode here. But I don't know, you wanna do a search? We could search for uh, Michael MJD. This will probably bring up the mobile results page that usually always happens. Uh, yes, continue, that's fine. Yep, there we go. We're not gonna be able to go to YouTube at all on this thing, but we can try. Well, that answers that. So we're just gonna <laughs> go to the old net. Gosh, it's always good to see the old net. So let's try to go to, hey, that's appropriate, nintendo.com. Let's go to nintendo.com in 2008 and see what they were up to back then. It looks like it's displayed this page relatively well. Um, so it looks like Wii Music was coming out around this time. Experience Wii, experience Nintendo DS, Kirby Superstar Ultra, man. World of Goo, oh my gosh, that was a pretty fun game. I played it on the Wii first. I think it was a download on the Wii Shop channel. I think it was WiiWare. Um, and then I ended up getting it for uh, PC later on, like many years later, actually. Nintendo's Holiday 2008, Wii Speak Channel, Club Nintendo, more so, oh gosh, remember Club Nintendo? Wii Remote Jacket Accessory Offer back when that was going on. 2008 was actually the year that my family got a Nintendo Wii. Yeah, we kind of got it. We, we didn't get it in 2006 when it first came out as much as I wanted it back then, uh, but we ended up getting it a couple years later, which uh, which was pretty great. And uh, gosh, it was it was a pretty fun console just to be able to like mess around with. There's so, so much stuff to do on it. It just seemed like a whole new world at the time. But yeah, so that is web browsing. We're online, which is great. Uh, I actually want to go to the package manager too, because that was in here under apps, uh, tools, I believe. Uh, or no, was it under system? Yeah, here it is. So we'll launch the package manager because I want to see what's in here. Oh, we got to type in the root password. Okay. I'd be curious to see what uh, shows up in here. So we've got a bunch of categories 3D chess. Oh, uh, yeah, let's get 3D chess. Why not? We'll mark for installation. I wonder how much of this stuff would like work on here. This needs to be like way smaller. This box here on the bottom, let's resize that. Maybe, oh, can it not be resized any more than that? Oh, it can't. Oh, that's annoying. Really? 
Oh, that sucks. So, so this is how large that the package like selection window is, uh, or part of the window anyway. So let's see if, oh my gosh, you know what? If GIMP is on here, oh, we can just search from here. Let's do that. GIMP, there we go. All right, so we'll mark that for installation to be installed. So we should have 3D Chess, GIMP, and all the stuff it needs. All right, that's fine for us. And let's let it download. Hooray, so we've got GIMP now. <laughs> on the Nintendo Wii. The question now, of course, is can we actually open it up? Welcome to the GIMP 2.2, and the window is too freaking large, it goes off the screen, so we'll have to uh, minimize, or not minimize, but like restore it there, we'll hit continue. We gotta do the same thing here. For proper uh, installation, the folder named uh, GIMP 2.2 needs to be created, okay. Um, I, I wanna like get to, yeah, continue. 128 megabyte tile cache size it looks fine to me. Oh boy, look at that splash screen. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's actually working. I, I actually, I shouldn't jinx myself, it might crash. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here it is, everybody. So if you've ever asked yourself, huh, I'd, I'd wonder if you could run GIMP on the Nintendo Wii. Well, the answer is yes, you absolutely can uh, through this really convoluted and uh, just something that you should never, like, there's no reason to do any of this. There's far better ways of running GIMP, but it is, I mean, I, I have to say it is pretty cool that we've got it running on the Wii here. So we'll make a really basic 420 by 300 file, that's fine. And we'll just, I don't know. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> with the resolution being so low, we can't even fit everything on the freaking screen. Um, what do we wanna do? Fill with a color gradient? Yeah, that, that sounds good to me. And let's maybe draw some stuff on it. Let's maybe, uh, let's go here and get a larger, thing and, and do this and maybe select a different uh, color. So maybe get a nice like red going on. <laughs> MJD. Uh, and I don't know, you want to like fill something up? I don't know why I'm asking you guys as if you could tell me what we're doing. Um, let's maybe uh, get a blue here and hit OK and let's maybe uh, fill that up yeah that looks that looks amazing okay so we're gonna save this utter masterpiece let's just do it as a gimp xtf image that's fine lovely absolutely lovely okay so that's gimp that's the package manager you saw there's a decent amount of stuff in there that we could install and that's web browsing the other thing i would like to answer is can we put a dvd into the nintendo wii that has a video file on it. I've copied one of my video files over to this DVD and, you know, formatted it properly to where you can put this into a DVD player and it'll play. So, let's pop it in. And first off, let's just see if anything comes up on the desktop. But I am going to open up VLC. The drive doesn't appear to be doing anything. There's no activity going on. So, let's open up VLC. And we have GM player on here too, and we could try that. Okay, and let's go to file, open disk. Let's just go with the defaults and hit okay, and play. We've got no drive activity. Drive is not doing anything. Now it did mention this had, there was experimental support for the Wii's DVD drive, and it didn't say anything about playing like DVDs through VLC. I'm just trying this out. Um, but it's definitely not looking good here. Device name, what would the device name, DVD device to use? Um, yeah, I don't even know, I don't even know what that would be. I mean, nothing is showing up on the desktop here. If we go into file system, yeah, we got nothing in here. Oh, and also of note, when you put a disc into the Wii's drive, you can't hit the eject button. That does not do anything when you're booted into Linux here. So I don't think we can even eject the thing. We could try the other media player here. Oh boy, does this remind you of something? Uh, <laughs> so let's um, let's go here and can we just right click? Okay, open, play DVD. Fail to open DVD one. Okay, well that ain't good. So yeah, it's looking like uh, the DVD drive 
may not have been fully supported at this point, but still, this is pretty freaking awesome, like let's be real. I mean, just getting Linux working on the Wii by itself is pretty cool, but getting it on the network, that's even better. So this experiment was a total success, and I'm really happy that everything actually went right for once. I mean, of course, you could say that the DVD thing, something did go wrong, of course, it's an MJD video, gonna happen, but, I'm definitely really happy with this and uh yeah it's just it's just pretty cool that people actually took the time to to get linux working on the wii even though you know there's no real practical reason for this other than just to say we did it and it's cool so yeah that's gonna wrap it up for this video guys i hope you enjoyed this one if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up get subscribed all that good stuff and as always i want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video